Descriptive statistics are used for organizing, summarizing, and describing data. They include the use of percentages, frequencies, averages, graphs, and tables. They do not involve generalizing beyond the data at hand. Generalizing from a sample to the population it was sampled from is the domain of inferential statistics. Let's consider some examples. This table shows the average salaries for various occupations in 1999. These statistics are referred to as descriptive statistics because, as the name suggests, they describe the data. Indeed, descriptive statistics are important and give us a great deal of information, in this case, about the different salaries that individuals make. It is interesting to note, for instance, that we pay the people who educate our children and who protect our citizens a great deal less than we pay people who take care of our feet or our teeth. Descriptive statistics offer us many insights into our population. For example, according to the Information Please Almanac website, we can learn about which parts of the country we should live in if we are trying to look for an opposite-sex partner. Consider this table that shows the number of unmarried men per 100 unmarried women in U.S. metro areas in 1990. From this table, we see that men outnumber women most in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And women outnumber men most in Sarasota, Florida. These descriptive statistics may make us ponder why the numbers are so disparate in these cities. One potential explanation, for instance, as to why there are more women in Florida than men may involve the fact that elderly individuals tend to move down to the Sarasota region and that women tend to outlive men. Thus, more women might live in Sarasota than men. However, in the absence of proper data, this is only speculation. Descriptive statistics are also important in sports. Certainly in the world we live in, we are inundated with sports facts and figures. Consider, for example, the Olympic marathon. Since the Olympics in 1896, we have kept track of the length of time it takes the fastest individual in the world to run a marathon. These are the compiled statistics for both men and women. Women have only been allowed to compete since 1984. What do these descriptive statistics tell us? What sorts of questions do they make us consider? These descriptive statistics may lead us to draw comparisons across gender and note that Takahashi, the lead female runner in 2000, would have beaten the male runner in 1956 and all male runners in the first 12 marathons. These statistics might further lead us to question whether the gender gap will close or remain constant. We might also look at the times within each gender and wonder just how far they will decrease. For instance, do you think, from looking at the numbers, that we will ever witness a marathon runner who runs a sub-two-hour marathon? These are the sorts of questions that statistics allow us to ask, and we remind you to start thinking of these questions when you encounter statistics.